it is not my place to to um, condemn Hamas. My, well, of course it my, is. Of course it is. They're a, ter- I, they're I, a prescribed I, terrorist organisation in this country who butchered 1,400 people, babies and civilians, and they have taken 240 Israelis hostages who are being held right now, and many people are absolutely terrified about what is happening to them. Now is a perfect opportunity to condemn Hamas. If um, The reason I'm not condemning Hamas is because my tax tax money is not funding Hamas. If I ever found out that my tax money is funding Hamas like it does the, um, the arms that is being sent to Israel, I would in a second... second um, Feriel, the Hamas. problem I'm with deeply, that is... No, I'm Feriel, no, hang on, hang on. Feriel, all dead. Feriel I'm the problem is with that, I'm people will... Consu- Feriel, let's have a conversation. People uh-huh. listening to this will yes. think that you, if you're not condemning Hamas... By implication, you are supporting them. Are so I'm supp- giving you the opportunity here to say that as someone taking part in this pro-Palestinian march in London today, that you condemn Hamas. So both just explain to us, and Feriel, maybe you could go first, just to explain why you're taking part in this protest. Um, I am, uh, just to give you a bit of context, I am a lecturer of post-colonial studies. My focus area is childhood studies, and I've researched childhood and children in Palestine. So I've spent a lot of time in the West Bank researching children. So I'm very aware of the impact that attacks and conflict like this has on children. So if I give you a little bit of context on what the children of Gaza are going through right now, so as you've already said in your show that Israel's attack on Gaza has killed more than 11,000 Palestinians. Because children make up 47% of the population, this is 4,800 children. So children are deeply, deeply affected by this collective punishment. And now we're a month into this current escalation. Um, It's 11th of October. On the 9th of October, Israel imposed a total blockade of the Gaza Strip. So it's cut off water, electricity, food, fuel and communication system. And Gaza is a very tiny area which has a very, very densely populated. So there are 2.2 million people. And it has carried out an extensive bombing campaign, destroying entire neighborhoods, wiping out entire families. I've got friends who have lost three generations of families. So in Gaza, many branches of one family often share a home. And it's quite common for some families to, like I said, to have lost three generations in one airstrike. And this bombing campaign has targeted, like you said earlier in your report, hospitals, schools, refugee camps, mosques, churches. There are no universities left, as well as forcible transfers and the use of uh, white phosphorus in very densely populated areas as well. So as somebody who cares deeply about children and the rights of children, I am there today at this march calling Um, The march has very, very clear objectives, and one of the main and urgent one is to call for an immediate ceasefire and end of this violence um, that's taking place on uh, Palestinian people and Palestinian children as well. And of course, Israel would say that they don't directly target hospitals or mosques or any of these places, but they say that Hamas tunnels and fighters and militants are within these walls and they are firing on Israel and therefore they are legitimate targets. That is what Israel would say. Max, do come in on this. Tell us why you're taking part today. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, Feriel made very, very good points here. I think she really outlined the necessity of a ceasefire here to, you know, uh, speak a little bit about the point that you just made. I think it's important to remember here that the Gaza Strip is you know, the size of East London. It's a tiny, tiny area. And the amount of bombs that Israel has dropped on Gaza in just the past month are of a volume that is so massive and so disproportionate to any type of, uh, you know, any type of claims of a, of a right to self-defense, that we really, really cannot speak here about any type of operation that takes the lives of civilians into account. The amount of got bombs that are uh, on Gaza, you know, 10,000 deaths, more than, uh, or almost half of those children, that isn't something that happens if it's a, if it's an attempted sort of uh, specific military operation that is only about the right to self-defense. You've seen Israel bomb uh, civilians who are evacuating the northern Gaza Strip after uh, calling on them to evacuate because they will be concentrating their operations only on the northern Gaza Strip. You've seen, of course, bombings of bombings of hospitals that are completely disproportionate to any claims even of this ostensible sort of Hamas operation uh, below below hospitals and and you know you, uh, with using civilian sites. Mm. But you know, one thing that I want to pick up on here specifically as well is the fact that. The reason that the march is happening this weekend is not because we are attempting to be disruptive. It is not because we are we we do not care about the uh, the events of, of Remembrance Day. We wish that we wouldn't have to march. In fact, we've been marching every week now for weeks, and the reason that we are doing so is because of an urgency 
an urgency to call for a ceasefire. If, you know, the government, the British government had already called for a ceasefire, we wouldn't have to be doing this. But every single week that we march, more and more people die. More people die in Gaza because of the fact that the moral failings of the Labour Party and of the Conservative Party in refusing to call for a ceasefire make themselves more evident. Okay, right? I mean, and, that, and, that's, and that's a clear point, and I know that many protesters make that point. I guess the counter-argument to that is, why do it today? This is Armistice Day. This is a really important day for many families of people who have lost loved ones giving their lives for the freedom that we enjoy today in this country. And actually, why not just wait until next weekend? Why does it have to be today? Um, can, can I come in there? Of course. Um, I think it's very important because it really matches the, the, the values of Armistice Days because that is what we're calling for. We're calling for a ceasefire. And actually, even the organiser of the Armistice Day, the Senate of Events, the, the charity, the Western Front, they're not against the march going ahead. The trustee themselves said that the organisation believes in freedom of speech and freedom of protest, especially given that they're a democratic organisation that commemorates those, so those veterans who fought for democracy, for free, free speech, for freedom to protest. So it's so important that we're out there that day because it is in the spirit of Armistice Day and it is in the spirit of everything that the veterans fought for, this this uh, this right to protest and this right freedom for um, for speech. And the Met Police has also, the, the chief of the Met Police has also said that there's no legal or moral justification to ban the march or the fact that the march shouldn't be taken on the same day. And we are as well in mourning. So it really reflects the... Um, exactly what people who are mourning for their loved ones who perhaps uh, their grandparents who died during during world war one it is in the same kind of um, spirit of mourning and the previous marches that i've been to they've always been the same they've always been very uh, peaceful very mournful as well as we want our voices to be heard because it's very urgent this the end to this um, this bombardment. This and Ferial, it's interesting that you urgent. it's interesting that you talk about it being peaceful protest because this is the real concern today, isn't there? Because mm -hmm. there has been so much conversation, the comments from the Home Secretary, you know, Tommy Robinson, the leader of the English Defence League, saying we will come to the Senatov and we're going to protect the Senatov. There are real, genuine concerns that today may not be completely peaceful. I'm not suggesting for a moment that all of the people who turn up would be like that, but there could be fringe elements who are making anti-Semitic remarks, who are supporting Hamas, who are saying things which actually go against everything that both you are t both of you are telling us today. How concerned, Max, are you? For example, things like chanting from the river to the sea. How worried are you about things like that happening today? Well, I think it's interesting to hear about this risk of disruption, because if we speak about the groups that you have just mentioned, the incendiary rhetoric, it's not coming from the vast majority of protesters. The people that it's coming from, on the one hand, is the Home Secretary, who has been spreading incredibly divisive and hateful rhetoric by smearing all protesters as anti-Semites, by speaking about these, uh, you know, these these groups of mobs uh, in the streets, which is completely contrary to the reality of the protest. And it's groups like Tommy Robinson's groups. It's far-right groups that have been embold emboldened by the rhetoric of the Home Secretary. You know, I th I, I'm not concerned about this because of the fact that I've been a part of a Jewish bloc in the past protests as a member of Namud and as uh, you know, a network of other Jewish groups that are increasingly concerned about Palestinian human rights and Palestinian lives. The ethos of the protest is very much in line with Jewish values. There is a significant Jewish presence at the protest. We are Jews who understand that our liberation and Palestinian liberations are interlinked because Israeli safety cannot and will not come at the cost of Palestinian oppression. So I'm not worried about these chants. I'm not worried about uh, about any type of any 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 type of you know sort of anti-Semitism. Obviously, so that's interesting. So you you find the chant from the river to the sea. You, you're not threatened by that. You don't find that offensive. I do not find that offensive. No, what I find offensive, on the other hand, of course. When you have a large group like this, 500,000 people, you know, you are going to be eventually maybe have some bad actors. And of course, there is a very, very real danger of anti-Semitism in the UK right now. Make no mistake, anti-Semitism in the UK right now is at genuinely incredibly concerning levels. But much of that is not coming from the people who are protesting today. And 
the anti-Semitism that I see right now is in this rhetoric that uh, conflates Israeli actions with Jewish ones. You know, when you say that a march like this, that a march of 500,000 people calling for a ceasefire is somehow antithetical to Jewish life, what kind of picture do you think that paints of Jews? And when you paint Muslims as these hateful hordes that are raring to go after Jews, 500,000 people on the streets today that are calling for a ceasefire, as if that were somehow antithetical to Jewish beliefs. Fariel, what picture do you think paints of Muslims? Fariel, I want to bring you in. I mean, people are listening to you both very clearly. We're getting lots of messages coming in, which we'll read some of those out in, in a few moments. One of the central things people are asking is, do you both want to condemn Hamas now and their actions on October the 7th? Um, it is not my place to to um, condemn Hamas. My, well, of course it my, is. Of course it is. They're a, ter my, they're a prescribed my, my... terrorist organisation in this country who butchered 1,400 people, babies and civilians, and they have taken 240 Israelis hostages who are being held right now, and many people are absolutely terrified about what is happening to them. Now is a perfect opportunity to condemn Hamas. If uh, The reason I'm not condemning Hamas is because my tax tax money is not funding Hamas. If I ever found out that my tax money is funding Hamas like it does the, um, the arms that is being sent to Israel, I would in a second second um, Feriel, Feriel, the problem I'm with deeply, that is no, I'm Feriel, no, hang on, hang on about, all death. Feriel, the problem is with that I'm people will, Feriel, that. let's have a conversation people uh -huh. listening to this will think yes. that you, if you're not condemning Hamas, by implication you are supporting them I'm so I'm giving you the opportunity here to say that as someone taking part in this pro-Palestinian march in London today, that you condemn Hamas. What I'm saying is that this uh, that there are hostages in Gaza and this Israeli bombing ca campaign is also putting the lives of the hostages in Gaza at greater and greater risk. So I joined the families of these hostages to call for an immediate ceasefire. Me condemning Hamas or not condemning Hamas, I don't think it has anything to do with anything. And I think it's quite an offensive question because I, me as a Muslim academic, I have nothing to do with Hamas. Of course, I and I'm not, Fariel, I am not from moment, Fariel, Fariel, I am not from moment suggesting that you have <laughs> have any links to Hamas or anything like that. But what I'm saying is one of the criticisms that is put towards people who are out on the streets today and will be protesting, and indeed some people who've been arrested for supporting Hamas at those demonstrations, we're told there are some fringe elements of people at these protests who support Hamas. I'm simply giving both you and Max, who is British Jewish, the opportunity to say that you condemn Hamas. That's not something you want to do, which is within your rights. I wonder, Max, if you want to condemn Hamas. If I, if I, can, if I can jump in there for a second, yeah, because I think Fario makes a very, very good point point here about the fact that Israeli bombardments are also putting the lives of hostages at risk. Now, you know, me and uh, I think the overwhelming majority of the British Jewish community were absolutely horrified at the attacks on October 7th. Many members of Namad have family in Israel. Many members of Namad know people who, you know, were attacked, uh, were taken hostage, were in some other way affected directly by the events on October 7th, which, you know, were an unforgivable act of uh, act of violence that, of course, we cannot uh, we cannot con condone in any way. And then no one is condoning those attacks, uh, certainly not now, and certainly not on this call. What we do see, though, right now is the fact that, you know, we have we have to mourn the dead and we have to fight for the living. The living includes the hostages that have been taken by Hamas, which of course once again is a is is a is a horrible act. Uh, those hostages' lives are being threatened as well by the Israeli bombardment of Gaza, which again is an area that is so small and under such heavy bombardment right now that everyone's life in the area is at risk. The families of hostages have called for a prisoner exchange. The families of hostages have called have expressed their concern for the bombardment of Gaza because they know the fa of, about the fact that it puts their families' lives at risk as well. What I do not understand is why the British government, you know, although it will smear every protester as, you know, a supporter of Hamas by proxy, which is, of course, a... They haven't done that, to be fair, Max. They, have, they, have, they haven't smeared all of the protesters in that way, the government. Well, they have, you know, they they have stoked rhetoric that does so. They've they've, you know, painted this picture of the protesters as 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 a violent mob, as anti semites, and you know, as a result of that, have conflated a lot of the actions of the protesters with the ideology of groups like Hamas. 
But you know what I what I what I think is important here is that the, see, the call for a ceasefire is is one of a moral and political imperative that is motivated not only by the concern for Palestinian civilians but also by the concern for Israeli civilians. A continued bombardment of Gaza will not secure the lives of Israeli civilians. Will not secure the lives of Jewish civilians worldwide. This is the you know central message that motivates Namod's concern for uh, both Palestinian and Israeli human rights. So you know to conflate a protest like this, which is about a ceasefire, a ceasefire that is motivated by the concern of both Israeli and Palestinian civilians, to conflate that protest with a, you know, support for Hamas is something that I think is is wildly inaccurate. Okay, so to be clear that you you condemn the attacks, Max, and that, that you you don't support Hamas? Of, of, course, of course I don't. Yeah, that's Hamas. brilliant. I just want that absolute clarity. It's always good to get clarity. That's what we want here on Times Radio. Thank you both so much for speaking to us. So we heard there from Max. He is part of NAMOD, which is an organisation made up of British Jews critical of Israel's treatment of Palestinians. Also, you heard from Fariel Arwan, who is a university lecturer, both of whom are going on the march in London today, the pro-Palestinian march, which is taking place uh, 12 o'clock in High Park, starting to march at 12.45.